Okay, so this is Mario once again with MIA Microflight, and in this video, uh, it's going to be a quick, uh, short video. I am going to show you how to make these uh, connectors that I use on some of my airplanes to join a uh, complex uh, structure, like a bridge, uh, done with different uh, carbon rods of different lengths and positioned at various angles. So, what I use is I use a tubing such as this. This is a uh, PVC type tubing. Uh, polyvinyl chloride, uh, but you can also get this uh, from uh, the sheathing from electrical wires. If you strip the, the just the tubing, and uh, you'll end up with a copper a solid wire. You were you were not using the copper side, but we want to use the sheathing only as the tubing to make these uh, press fit connectors that I use on uh, quite a bit of my models. Now I've also done these in 3D printed uh, form, but I keep those as um, part of my uh, kits so I don't sell those and I don't give those away but you can certainly make these the way I'm, I'm showing you in this video and what you're seeing here is a um, are a couple pieces that I've cut to about three-eighths of an inch these are to fit the two millimeter uh, carbon rods for example uh, and so that's what you're looking here and so I've cut these to about three three-eighths of an uh, inch in length it's better to cut them longer and assemble them with the proper angles uh, it just makes it easier to work with that way and you can all, always finalize and trim them uh, a little bit shorter so they uh, are less uh, in weight when you're done with the assembly of each of these uh, complex connectors uh, or multi-point uh, connectors. So, so. This one over here has, uh, it's almost like a T, a combination of a T, but it also has this little one here which is uh, on, done on, on an angle. And so if I, if I can hold this steady in my camera while I, I relocate this. The way it should be you know you can see the angle there and you can see the uh, the edge has been trimmed to that angle to fit on the on that on the, underneath this uh, connector which would be the longer run or or the uh, longer rods that would go right through the t the top portion and then this vertical one would be a vertical rod and then the diagonal one would be a, a bracing for the for a frame such as uh, the savage robber uh, airplane that i show in uh, a recent video and this is the reason why i'm making uh, this video and to show these uh, connections because somebody asked me if they can buy the STL file for these particular connectors and I just don't sell STL files. I'm not in that business of selling STL files or giving them for free because anytime I create a design from scratch and I make an STL file it it goes into my kits and because they are integral part of my original design in, in a kit form I don't sell those things individually so they come as, as a kit as part of the kit but I am showing this is a freebie and, and a way to make your own you know they're not very uh, hard to make provided you follow these uh, guidelines here so this is the tubing you can buy a uh, electrical cable or electrical wire I think uh, 10 amps is, is a good size for two millimeter uh, sheathing but sheathing sometimes comes in various thicknesses so you have to experiment with the uh, the materials and uh, uh, the type of wire the size you know a bit uh, to get the right fit but what you want to end up is with a, a tight fit connector that is going to wrap. So when you press the, the carbon rod in place, it's going to fit nice and snug. Uh, let me see if I have a carbon rod here. So here's, here's a 2 millimeter carbon rod. And you can see the, the size of the, the tubing. So this, this particular tubing that I have here fits quite nicely in, in this uh, 2 millimeter carbon rod. And you can resize this accordingly depending on the on the rod and the scale of the model that you're building so this is how, how I used to make my connectors when I didn't have a 3d printer and I just didn't have the means to make my own or injection mold the injection molding is another way to do this but that requires an aluminum mold which is a lot more expensive so um, that's the reason why I do this in a 3d printed uh, version in in a flexible uh, kind of semi semi flexible material you don't want this to be too flexible because you don't want the frame to be floppy so you want this uh, a little bit of rigidity embedded in there, a little bit of flexibility to help you um, uh, with the assembly of the, the frame, especially a, a tail boom that is built like a bridge uh, with many connections uh, in, in the, uh, at different points. So this is the way uh, to do uh, this. This one right here, I don't have that piece, the vertical piece that would go right here on top of this center piece right there. Uh, you would want to have another piece to brace, uh, to do a horizontal brace socket for this connector for the uh, 
for the frame, for the tailbone, for uh, say, for instance, uh, for the uh, Savage Bobber or, or any open frame uh, ultralight aircraft that you're building that requires a uh, bridge-like uh, structure for the tail section or just throughout the, the, the main frame, you know, if you're building this uh, from carbon rods. So, um, uh, and once again, the geometry here, it depends on the specific uh, uh, airplane that you're building. Uh, what I typically do is I make a plan of the, the model, the way I want to build it. Let me get my plan here. And so what you're looking here is the plan. You can see the, uh, that is the plan. And all those pieces that you see there are basically uh, uh, to support the carbon rods as I'm building this with all the connectors. Um, this also works uh, point to point if you're going to epoxy the uh, connections or CA glue if you were to build a balsa stick model. And so uh, that's how I build this. And typically this is the way that is done in uh, full scale manufacturing where when you're building uh, uh, complex structures you need a jig of some, some sort to retain all these pieces in place. You know, this is a basically a typical uh, jig that would be uh, built for uh, that type of construction. Any any type you need require uh, consistency in manufacturing, you got to have a jig of some some sort, and this is one way to uh, to do this. Many uh, people that uh, build models that are uh, old school, uh, they build uh, things like this. You know, with jigs like that. There's also the um, other way to build. Uh, uh, the, the traditional way of building balsa models is just to pin them, you know, you use a pin to hold the pieces in, in place uh, to the plan. So that's another way to do this, but I like doing it this way, and although uh, you could make these out of uh, solid pieces of wood, I don't. I use foam here. The same foam board uh, materials that I use in my airplanes, but except I use them as guides uh, for my uh, connectors, which in this case would be carbon rods or uh, uh, balsa sticks or you name it I mean you, uh, whatever you're using this is your connector there you can use these okay so and and they press fit in here because the foam tends to give a little bit and open up but it also retains the part in place so that's the reason why I use foam board here is my uh, retaining uh, clamps if you will for each of these rods and it keeps everything aligned and everything perfect when you uh, take your time and you assemble the, the frame and so this is how I do my frames like I said, this is a very traditional way of doing uh, manufacturing assemblies in the real world. You know, this, of course, in the real world, you know, some of these uh, blocks are done with uh, wood or, or metal even. They have additional clamps, you know, to hold things in place while the frame is being uh, welded. In, in the case of a full-scale model that is built with um, um, stainless steel or uh, aircraft uh, aluminum, those uh, need to be uh, clamped and, and hold in place with uh, additional hardware. Uh, as part of the jigs, but this is basically the way you would do it. Once you get these angles here, and then you can, you know, you can start forming your uh, connector by uh, cutting the pieces that you would need for those specific uh, uh, connections. And they, in this case, you know, you you would need one that goes up. Uh, my hands shaking here. One that goes horizontally, another one that goes um, a diagonal, another diagonal here, a vertical here, and then you need a, a another perpendicular one here to hold uh, the rod that connects the, these two sides once you're done with the, the, the side uh, uh, framing. So, you know, you just build in each one of these angles is different, you know, from one point to the other because of the differences in, in, uh, in because of the angles here of the, uh, the main rods, you know, the main long rods that establish the uh, profile of the aircraft. So, if you take your time, you know, if you use a jig like this or a profile or a pattern, something like this you know you can achieve uh, some uh, very good uh, results um, uh, you don't need these uh, clamps here the way I have it here for making these uh, connectors you can just do them over uh, just a, a flat plan you know just uh, going by the direction of the uh, particular angles that these rods need to be connected to as you're making this connector out of um, uh, tubing okay so that out of the way let's go back to the the connector in itself here so the key here is to uh, find a type of tubing that is uh, going to uh, have the press fit uh, characteristics you know that you want for the particular carbon rod that you're, you're going to be inserted into but also you want a uh, material that is going to glue with CA glue I use this uh, particular glue here InstaCure um, it's not a very fine glue it's got a little more um, uh, it's a medium um, 
medium gap filling type of glue. It's not that really thin one because the thin one tends to, uh, you know, uh, just uh, spill all over. So this one is gap filling and it'll create little um, fillets as you're building these connectors and so it'll retain a, a little bit better. So some of these materials, PVC is a polyvinyl chloride uh, um, type of plastic uh, and it's uh, available in, in many types of tubing. Uh, if you use that, it works really well with, with CA glue. You can also uh, speed up the process by using a CA accelerator. And the way you do that is you apply the little glue and you just spray a little bit of that. Uh, anytime you use chemicals of this type, I would urge you to protect your, your breathing uh, passages, your nose, you know, your, your mouth, your lungs. Do this in a well-ventilated area or wear a uh, type of respirator that is uh, um, designed you know, for th those types of uh, uh, particles of chemicals that's not going to uh, make you sick. Um, these things uh, don't tend to show up in the, you know, when you use them up, up front, but they, they tend to show up when you start aging and you get a little bit older, you'll feel the, the effects of that when you're breathing. I'm not talking uh, on this uh, uh, from personal experience because I, I do protect my lungs and one of the things you should do is, is always use uh, safety in anything that you do, anything that you build, any chemicals, any, anything that you use, even the, the things that don't look uh, too lethal, you know, protect yourself. It's better to take protection and, uh, and be safe than, than sorry. Same applies to welding, especially welding when you're working with fumes. you got to do that in a well-ventilated area and uh, you have to protect your lungs, number one. You know, your lungs is a, you know, is a very precious um, device in, in your system and you want to protect that at all times. Uh, you don't want to compromise your immune system because that can, that can lead to uh, severe, severe effects uh, later on as you age, like I said. But taking all those precautions, you know, you can certainly build uh, things like this, uh, as I'm explaining in this video. Um, and basically, that's the way you do it, and that's the way I would recommend you do it if you want to build something similar to uh, what I have in my uh, Savage Bobber. Of course, those are 3D printed. In the designing of the original uh, connectors, it took me a long time. This is quite a bit of effort in doing these connectors because everyone has to have uh, specific angles and uh, just uh, you know keep that in mind. But you can certainly do this uh, manually and um, you will end up with a much, much better connection than just gluing the pieces, uh, you know, point to point. Anyway, so if this helped you, please let me know. Give me a thumbs up in this video. I put any comments and I will respond to them accordingly. Mario with MI Microflight. Thank you for watching.